I feel like praying again because you all intimidate me with your uh, your love for the Lord and just the fragrance that's released from this place is just so beautiful. Um, and the unity of the spirit is just so cool to me. Um, it's different when you're in a larger environment and God speaks something to you and you hear one person confirm what he spoke to you but here every single person seems to say something or do something or sing something and it's like wow every single joint really does supply so i'm just gonna pray again <laughs> and um how much time do i have <laughs> okay so um holy spirit we welcome you our expectation is of you we love you. Thank you for confirming so many things. We are going to follow you and learn of you and hear what you're saying and what you're speaking to the church. It's such glorious privilege. We love you. Thank you. I just believe, God, that there's going to be even more confirmation as I share what I feel that you've given me. Even more confirmation. And I believe, God, that you will cause to take root everything that is of you. And the things that are not of you, God, you'll just blow it right away. But we welcome you to take your place here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I accepted the request to to serve to minister this morning and then about 20 minutes later I got really sick and was just like fighting through and everything but um I really felt that there's something the Lord really wants to say this morning so I'm gonna jump right in but I may not be nearly as enthusiastic and I probably won't talk as fast which is a good thing. <laughs> um, but uh, just have a question uh, for you. How many of you have heard of Northampton, Massachusetts? Anybody heard of it? Anybody been there? Tourist location, hot vacation spot. Oh, Gavin, you've heard of it. That's good. It's good. One person who's three years old, four years old. Maybe he's two. He's just tall. Um, Logan County, Kentucky. Anybody heard of that? <gasps> Gavin again. Good. We got one person that's heard of that. <laughs> well, uh, it's just really not to test your geography, American, you know, geography of, I don't know, the Midwest and New England. Really, it's to encourage us. Um, how many have heard of Eolia? We're the only ones. We're the only ones. Everyone else. Oh, good. <laughs> Gavin again. <laughs> three for three. Everyone else that I talk to, I have to say in relation to Troy or Wentzville, and it's just the most hilarious thing to me. But I just want to present to you that the first Great Awakening and the second Great Awakening started in those little towns. I just want to present that perhaps some of the biggest things that God does for the nation, start in little towns and little cities, little villages like this. And I feel a renewed sense. I just even now feel as if the Lord is saying, you are a people prepared for my glory. You're, you're actually prepared. And, um, am I still here? Oh, good. And perhaps, that's all right. Perhaps um, I was actually talking to Amanda a few weeks ago when God spoke some things to us here. Perhaps we are that people that's prepared and perhaps we're actually on the forefront of what God is doing. Uh, maybe some of the scaling back that we experience and that we see 
uh, a little more starkly and a little more clearly in smaller settings that causes us to be a little more, you know, have a bit more of an urgency. For instance, when you have a party and you've invited five people and three people don't come, you're like, wow, you and I, we're going to have a great time tonight. But when you have a party and you've invited a thousand people and 300 people don't come, you don't even notice. There's no urgency. Nothing needs to change, really. Sweet, we're going to have leftovers. You know, that's kind of the, the idea. Well, I would say and present that um, perhaps the things that God is doing, it's almost like a wave as it recedes and it's getting ready to build momentum and come back. Perhaps we are on the forefront of that and we can see it more clearly. We can look through eyes of the spirit, see what God is doing, hear what God is saying, and make the right moves and adjust our sails correctly, make the right declarations. I feel that the things that God is doing, I wonder how many times I'm going to say that during the things that God is doing. I'm going to try not to repeat certain phrases over and over again uh, so you don't get fatigue in hearing my voice. Um, but I really feel in my heart I'm longing for more. It's different. I feel the fear of the Lord. I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in a greater way. I feel this longing that I just haven't felt in a really long time. It's like God is stirring something on the inside. I believe, I wrote this down, healings, miracles, signs, and wonders, and particularly in the marketplace. I believe that revival is actually coming. Awakening is actually coming. It's just, I'm like, everything everybody said was everything God spoke to me. So let's say amen and go home. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> it seems like 90% of us are struggling with something physically. Maybe we should just go home. No, uh, we believe for healing. But revivals are, are amazing. They're awesome. Awakening is coming. But there's a glory component to what God is doing. And there's also a judgment component to what God is doing. And I struggled with that because... I really felt like we've been through enough. Why do we really need to hear anything about judgment right now? Like, just as a body, like, really? <laughs> you know? But it, it gets better. I, I promise it turns around. So I actually feel encouraged because there's a first love that's awakening in our hearts. You can feel it. You can see it. You can sense it a little better here than you can if you're kind of lost in a crowd. And it's producing first works. Can you see that? It's almost like that little bud, that little, you know, burst of life that you're seeing, that you're being reminded. And that, oh, man, Tim, 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 Sound Booth Tim, Robeson Tim, hit it right I mean, just hit the nail on the head. The word that I kept getting, I could not get the word remember out of my heart, out of my spirit. That's something God is doing. But he already, he already spoke it through someone else. Like, why do I feel so connected to this memorial of what God has done and what God is saying? Because that's what God is saying, and that's what he's doing right now. First love produces first works. Oh, I forgot my Bible. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2 should be a very easy book in the Bible to find because it's the last one for those that might not know. He knew everything else, but he might not know that one. I'm talking about Gavin. Revelation chapter 2, I know your works. Verse 2, your labor, your patience, how you can't bear that which is evil. You've tried them that say they're apostles and are not. You found them to be liars. You've borne, you've had patience for my name's sake. You've labored and you've not fainted. Nevertheless, the Lord has an assessment here. I've got something against you. You've left your first love. His solution is, is something that he's already spoken through us in this congregation to remember. 
I just feel so encouraged that God is actually breathing upon us. First love producing first works. I don't feel like this is a word where God is saying, you got to do better, blah, blah, blah. I feel like he's saying, look, you guys are on the right track. You're actually doing this stuff. He spoke it through Tim Robeson that I, and, and also through um, Debbie, this, the desire for awakening, the, the desire and just the, not just the desire, actually remembering the things that God has done. His solution in Revelation 2, 5, remember, therefore, from whence you are fallen. Second solution, repent. Continue to repent, as uh, I think that was Tim that spoke during communion of repenting, you know, continuing to keep that heart pure and clean before the Lord. And doing of the first works. Excuse me. Doing of the first works, the awakening. And I feel like um, that concept of remembering is something that God is very close to and very near to. You see that um, when, when he was really wanting to pretty much wipe Israel out, Moses was like, remember Abraham. Remember Isaac. Remember your covenants, God. And that changed God's heart and changed his mind. So I really feel like the Lord is encouraging us that I'm already speaking these things to you. You are already on the right track. You are already on your way to being that mouthpiece, to making those declarations in the marketplace, to having those, t- those times of first, first love and communion with the Lord where you're m- remembering the things that he's done. Many times in the Old Testament, They would build memorials to God, and God loves that. He would visit Jacob at those memorials that he built to God. Um, At Bethel was one of them, and there are plenty of them there. But um, I really genuinely feel like the Lord was saying, and somebody literally took these words right out of my mouth when they were praying for one of us, maybe they were praying for Debbie. Yes. And it was Caroline. I wrote, literally wrote down, the Lord took note of your tears. The Lord took note of your prayers. The Lord remembers the times that you pressed through when you were feeling terrible and you're tempted to, you know, to draw back. But the Lord remembers that. Isn't that so cool? I just think that's cool. So, um, in my own humanity, of course, I was thinking, I don't really want to deliver this word. Why do we want to talk about the fear of the Lord and first works and all of this type of stuff? And the Lord actually spoke to me that his ways really are higher than our ways, that it really is not a hammer coming down on you, telling you what you haven't done. It's an encouragement. Here's what the word says. And look, every single one of you has done and said things to confirm what God is actually doing. You're on the right track. And uh, the thing about the fear of the Lord is the Bible says that it's actually the fountain of life. And I felt like that rejuvenation that some of us are needing as a result of our physical bodies being attacked, it actually comes when you receive and when you walk in a greater measure of the fear of the Lord. So I I just want us just to raise our hands to respond to that and say, yes, Lord, um, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for confirming your word. Thank you for giving us the fear of the Lord. And Father, we just as your children, we ask for more. As your, as your people, God, as your bride, we ask for more. Increase, God, a greater measure of the fear of the Lord on our lives that causes us to depart from evil. And that causes us to experience the very fountain of life. That's Proverbs uh, 14, 27. It's more practical application. Sorry that I'm giving you the scriptural reference after I quote the scripture. (laughs) um, A more practical application is also found in Proverbs chapter 2. That if there are any areas where we feel 
okay, all this stuff you're talking about, signs and wonders, revival in the marketplace, all this stuff, what, what does that have to do with me and my two and a half kids like, and my job? And like, what does that have to do with my life? How do I, how do I live tomorrow morning hearing this message that God has us positioned in a place where we are forerunners and forerunners for revival and even perhaps um, a, a womb or a conduit of another great awakening. So what do I do tomorrow? You know, morning when I wake up. What does this even mean? <laughs> And Proverbs chapter 2 has some really wonderful things to, to tell us about that. It says, cry out to God. This is a season to cry out to God after knowledge. Lift up your voice for understanding. There are, just, there are things that God is, has called us to do. There's ideas that he's given us. There's, you know, all the stuff that we feel in our heart we want to see manifested and we're not necessarily walking in it yet. It's like, here we are today. We can see what God wants to do. How do we get from there, from here to there? Cry out to God after knowledge. Proverbs 2, verse 3. Lift up your voice for understanding. Seek it like it's silver, like it's a hidden treasure, like it's something precious to you that you lost. Seek it. Seek after it. For the Lord gives wisdom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Verse 5. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and you will find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So it's a season to remember. It's a season for first love producing first works. It's a season to cry out after God for what in the world all that stuff means. <laughs> to you, tomorrow. Like, you know, we kind of have an idea of what it means for on a grand scale. But what does that mean for me when I walk into my job tomorrow morning? What does that mean for me when I wake up and I'm making breakfast for my family? What does that mean for me when I'm sitting in that hospital room or when I've got the crazy report about what's happening on my property, how do I apply all of this when that happens? And there's some practical things. We just went through the one in Proverbs chapter two, verse three through six, wait, something, five, six or seven, six. Um, the other practical application um, is found in my favorite, favorite, favorite chapter, Romans chapter 10, verse 6 through 13. So there's, a, there's an element of crying out to God, and there's also an element of faith, where, again, it's almost like part two of the first message that I preached. There's an element of faith to believe that you've you've actually already attained to it, um, much like what Anna was, was praying. And as she often prays, she prays from a position of victory. So there's, I'm crying out to God for it, but at the same time, I'm believing that it's already mine. I'm believing this is already who we are. This is already who I am. So you can apply it to your specific situations on Monday morning. I believe, I'm, first of all, I'm crying out to God for wisdom. What, is he, what are you saying about my physical situation? What are you talking to me about, about my job? God, what are you saying to me specifically, to me right here, about my finances? Talk to me about that. It's causing me, you know, a little bit of anxiety, and it's distracting me from seeking you and from loving you. What are you saying Right this minute, I'm crying out. I'm not leaving my prayer closet until I have knowledge and understanding. Teach me what this means. Show me how I can remember you and how I can enter into that place of love and intimacy with you. You got to show me how to do that. 
I can't go on yesterday's manna. I can't go on yesterday's word from you. Speak to me today. I'm crying out. I'm lifting up my voice. I'm doing the Proverbs chapter 2. The other practical thing is, God, I believe that you have already provided everything pertaining to life and godliness for me. I believe that I am already healed, that I've already seen who you've called me to be. I believe that you have already given me, God, the promotion that I am seeking and believing you for in this job. I believe you've already taken care of this coworker who is crazy. I choose to see them as a son and a daughter of the living God. So there's the position of I'm crying out for wisdom on every facet of my life, on this revival that I feel that you want to do. God, I need wisdom because sometimes I don't even really care about revival. So I really need, I need you to give me the fear of the Lord. I need you to give me wisdom. And then there's the Romans chapter 10 to where I've believed and therefore I've spoken. And it's, I'm not looking for somebody to go get it for me. I'm not looking for someone to bring it down to me. This is the word of faith um, that we preach. I'm going to turn there because my, uh, I'm getting mixed up. Ba-na-na-na-na. The word is near you in your mouth, in your heart. It's the word of faith, which we preach. Oh, I wasn't mixed up. I I read different translations, and so sometimes when I try to quote a scripture, it gets completely garbled in my head. Anyway, um, those are the two things of um, practical application that I wanted to bring out. Is this all right? Or is it a little confusing? It's good? Okay. It's okay if it's confusing. We can go over it again. (laughs) Okay, the other aspect that I wanted to bring out, I felt like this was actually a word from the Lord. So I feel uh, just, uh, my heart just feels so happy and so good about delivering this uh, to you that I saw this picture, like the enemy was taking these uh, boulders and he was just hurling it at us. Your barn, your back, your body, Bam, this report, that, all that stuff. And what I saw was that those fiery stones and those trials um, are actually for a memorial for us to build upon the living stone, which is Jesus. So instead of those things knocking you off off track or causing you to be offended or weighing you down, the carpenter, Jesus, who those stones are not too heavy for him. He wants you to walk with him. Come on, follow me. Come on. But no, no, no. That, that was designed to take you out and to knock you down and to keep you all, you know, burdened and weighed down. Let me take that. I'm going to chisel it. I'm going to put some pressure on it. I'm going to shape it. And then I'm going to sit it right on top of all those other stones that the devil tried to throw your way that you used as a stepping stone instead to to be built up unto the image of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the chief cornerstone. We are those living stones. Well, this kind of prophetic picture that he gave me was that the enemy was actually hurling boulders at us. And instead of them taking us out, we're using them to build and build and build and build and build upon the things that God has has done in our lives. So um, the admonition that I I felt as well, kind of as, as we're looking prophetically into the things that God is doing. Oh, I said it again. As we're looking prophetically into the future, into this, these manifestations um, of revival and of awakening, uh, the Lord wants to remind us that uh, to not get offended, don't stumble, don't get offended. Offense is just a small, sneaky, horrifying thing. Um, and the children of Israel, were, they were on that track. They were memorizing the Torah. They were reading. They were praying, seeking, fasting, tithing, doing everything. I mean, way more than I do. <laughs> and they missed Messiah. 
Why? How? How in the world? You knew where he was going to be born and who, you know, you had access to all of that. How did you miss out on Messiah? Romans chapter 9 gives us a pretty clear picture, and I'm actually going to read it in the Message Bible because it just kind of makes it very clear. It just kind of punches you right between the eyes and in a, the best possible way. <laughs> okay. I'm in chapter 9. Here's our, our admonition or our warning kind of. As you're, as you're walking forward, as you're moving towards this, as you're seeking after God, you want to find what he's doing. Um, we want to look at Israel as kind of our example of what not to do sometimes, most times, and what to do. Okay, so they don't have verses, so we're looking at around verse 30. How can we sum this up? Well, actually, let's read it in, I'll read it in King James first, Romans 9.30, and then Message Bible. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, did not attain righteousness. How's that? They sought it. Not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. They stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it's written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be ashamed. It's a very archaic way of saying this. How can we sum this up? All those people who didn't seem interested in what God was doing actually embraced what God was doing as he straightened out their lives. And Israel, who seemed so interested in reading and talking about what God was doing, missed it. How in the world did they miss it? Because instead of trusting God, they took over. They were absorbed in what they themselves were doing. I'm going to read that again. They were absorbed in what they themselves were were doing. They were so absorbed with their God projects that they didn't notice God right in front of them, like a huge rock in the middle of the road. And so they stumbled into him and went sprawling. Ah. <laughs> Isaiah again gives us the metaphor for pulling this together. Careful. I put a huge stone in the road to Mount Zion. It's a stone you can't get around, but the stone is me. If you're looking for me, you'll find me on the way, not in the way. So as we're moving forward, pressing in, seeking God, we will have plenty of opportunities to be offended, to stumble. This, this even says that it was actually God that put that stumbling stone there. Most of the time, it's just regular everyday life that causes these ugh, offenses. Man, you know, what they say that, why, why they do, how, uh, most of it's everyday life. And so I feel as if there's this glory where God is a manning the things, you know, that we're doing. He's championing us. He's encouraging us. And there's also this assessment where he's saying, okay, be careful of this. <laughs> be careful of this one thing. Uh, take heed to your heart that there aren't seeds of offense, that there isn't, you know, any, any issues uh, with God. I, I, I feel like, just to, to be honest, to be kind of vulnerable with this, for me, there's a health situation that I have just, I mean, I feel like this thing is like an extra sister in my family. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what, wow, you know? And so, there are times where I feel like I've broken through and then boom, there'll be this like sucker punch. And I'm like, I just don't have any more wind. I don't, I don't have any more energy. I, I, I just, you know, 
And I felt like the Lord spoke to me this morning. He's like, don't be offended with the journey. Don't be offended that it's taking a little longer than you may have wanted it to. Don't be offended that you have to keep fighting. And, you know, don't be offended even at some people. They, they like blink their eyes and they got a breakthrough 30 years ago and you're still, you know, believing, still kind of on that, on that track. Don't be offended when you see someone and they prayed once for revival, the church up the road, and they're bursting at the seams and they, it's like they accidentally fell into the glory of God. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. What, what's happening? Sorry. Um, so I, I, I feel like those are the two things that God is speaking to us this morning. And I just kind of want to respond to that for just a few, few minutes. Um, so Kenny, if you could go ahead and and play that if you can. And we're just going to take a few minutes to remember, remember the, the glorious things that God has done. And to thank him for confirmation, sweet confirmation and the encouragement that we're on the right track this morning. Take a few minutes as we cry out to God for wisdom on how to carry our hearts forward in the future. And, uh, and just declaring by faith, we're not just headed that way. This is where God has us. This is our inheritance. Uh, and, and praying, God, keep our hearts from offense. Give us unoffendable hearts. The Bible says, great peace have they that love your law. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing. Great peace have they that love your law. Nothing shall offend them. These are the type of people that we want to be. You can go ahead and play that. I'm going to kind of talk over it if I can, maybe. Lord, talk to us. Talk to us, God. Remind us of the beautiful things you've done. Take just a minute Jesus. to welcome you in, Lord, giving us wisdom, Jesus. empowering us with faith, driving out offense. of your words so that we would not be offended, God. It's just me and you. Just one more minute. Just let the Lord speak to you.
Lord, you're so good to us. We receive, we receive your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, beautiful people.